Republican Richard Burr, the senior senator from North Carolina, is in big, big trouble. He was first elected in 2004, and he's currently serving his last term in the Senate. He wasn't going to seek re-election in 2022, but he may be leaving even earlier because the FBI just sees his phone in a potential criminal investigation. They took it yesterday as part of an insider trading investigation uh, after he sold between $628,000 and $1.2 or $1.72 million worth of stock in early February after he came out of a classified or not yet public uh, briefing on the threat of coronavirus. Again, information that hadn't been released to the public yet, and that is not legal. That is not legal. The one-day sale involved 33 individual trades and occurred just a day after the Dow Jones Industrial Average reached a historic all-time closing high. A historic all-time closing high. And he sold. That's a huge red flag in and of itself. One week later, on February 20th, markets began a steep slide over fears that the coronavirus would paralyze the global economy. In the weeks following Burr's sale, the, the Dow lost 30% of its value. It has still since recovered some of those losses. We covered that on the show yesterday, um, how tens of millions of Americans are unemployed and yet the stock market is soaring once again. Even further complicating things, on the very day that Burr sold his stocks, February 13th, his brother-in-law, Trump appointee Gerald Foth, also sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of stock. And here's the cherry on the, uh, on the top of the icing uh, for this story. Burr was one of only three senators to vote against the Stock Act, uh, which Obama signed into law in 2012. The vote was 96 to three. It barred members of Congress from using non-public information to enrich themselves on the stock market, basically. It made that form of congressional insider trading illegal, basically. He put his name, one of the three, to being pro-corruption. If that doesn't ooze hubris, I don't know what does, but it does provide a little bit of data, useful hubris, I would say, when talking about his alleged crimes of insider trading. And he's the second Republican who's come under fire for potentially violating the law here. Kelly Loeffler, or Leffler of Georgia, she replaced uh, Senator Isaacson when he stepped down due to health reasons. She's a Republican as well. Uh, and she has a special election coming up at the end of the year. She's in the middle of a primary. Republicans loved her because she was able to self-fund because she's very wealthy, but her wealth and her greed also coming back to bite her. She sold around $20 million worth of stocks after attending a closed door Senate briefing in January. She has a pro-Trump MAGA head challenger and representative Doug Collins down in Georgia. But Georgia is one of those states that is trending blue. If she's able to make it through the primary, the Democrats better hammer this, hammer this $20 million of stock enriching herself off of um, insider information that eventually killed tens of thousands of Americans and will kill more uh, surrounding the coronavirus pandemic. But speaking of the Democrats, are they going to be able to effectively capitalize on this? That's a big if. Senate Minority Leader Charles Schumer, Chuck Schumer on Thursday, said it's premature for Senator Richard Barr to step down from the Senate Intelligence Committee because of a stock scandal, but urged colleagues to divest from stocks to avoid the appearance of conflicts of interest. If the roles were reversed and Mark Warner, who is the vice chair of that committee, was under investigation for insider trading surrounding the coronavirus pandemic, do you think Mitch McConnell would be like, it's premature for him to step down? We'll just, we'll, we'll wait to see how it goes. Politically, it's just so, so weak. It's unreal. They're unable to take a gift that's given to them. In states like North Carolina and Georgia, which are Southern states 
that Democrats could make inroads in, these two senators. No, we're just going to sit back. I'm not going to even demand that he step down as committee chair. There is precedent, though, um, if a, a committee chair is under indictment, not just convicted, they can be forced to step down. But <laughs> Chuck Schumer doesn't even want to start talking about that. Democrats, this is a gift. Your candidate is Joe Biden. You're falling apart. Use this to your advantage. Republicans are crooks. Maybe this pokes a hole in Trump's swamp narrative, etc., etc. We'll see if they do, but that quote from Schumer is troubling, to say the least.